This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, I'm taking my daughter out on a muzzleloader deer hunt. You may recall that she drew this same tag last year. As it's an either sex hunt, she was able to apply again this year and somehow got lucky getting the tag again. We had a lot of fun last year seeing plenty of bucks and so we're excited to head out once more to see what this year brought. Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. We started off checking out some areas that have been good in the past. However, this time there was really nothing to talk about, and so we headed off to a new spot. So the morning was kind of a bust. All we saw was a two point and a handful of does. Definitely disappointing. So we've come to another spot middle of the day. We're hiking up to a high point that we can just sit in glass for a couple hours and try to pick some country apart and see if we can't find some new animals. So we'll see what happens up here at this spot. This is an area that Aubrey and I found last year that seemed to be pretty good. This high spot we were hiking to was a great spot to overlook the entire drainage. It wasn't a good spot to start hunting from, but if we did find something, we could then make a game plan and go from there. So right off the bat, I spotted a couple deer bedded down across from us. Getting the spotting scope set up, we picked the area apart to see what we had. At first, we spotted a couple does, but had yet to see any antlers in the mix. There were still a few other deer we could see, just not clearly as they were behind some brush. Then as one of them worked into the open, we were glad to see it was a buck. At first, we thought it was just a big two-point, but as we watched it further, we realized that it was actually a young four-point buck as each fork then split again. We were, of course, glad to see some antlers, but in all honesty, we were looking for something quite a bit bigger. But at least we were seeing some rutting behavior, because that usually brings out the bigger ones. Then below them, we saw a few other does start working through the trees, and they were looking behind them quite often. As I watched to see what they were looking at, a bigger buck appeared hot on the trail of one of the does. We both focused on this buck as at first glance it could be a possible shooter. It was fun to watch the muley as it made sure to stay close to one specific doe. In fact, it wouldn't let it get very far. Now if you look closely, you'll notice that each of the forks are fairly well defined. However, the closer we looked, we realized that while it does look pretty good at first glance, it's actually a smaller buck. It's very narrow, it's probably only 20 inches wide, and not very tall. I guess to say it bluntly, it was just an average four point buck. On any other general hunt, we wouldn't think twice about taking it. But in this situation, where it's a late season hunt and we had hopes of seeing bigger ones, we kept looking. As we kept picking the hillside apart, I spotted a couple deer disappear in some thick brush. We watched and waited, and after some time, a few deer emerged. We knew there were a couple does and had seen glimpses of a buck. When the buck finally worked into the open, we were able to look at it a bit better. My first impression was that it was a pretty good buck and you could tell that it was rutting, but we quickly saw that it wasn't as big as I first thought. In fact, as we looked closely, we found it was just a very big two point buck. We got to a spot to glass down up this valley because in the past we've seen a lot of deer in it and we found three decent bucks, so well, kind of. Um, there's a couple. There's two small ones and a decent four point. We're trying to, to decide what to do, or if we just keep looking and watching. We kept watching the area, hoping to see more bucks in the mix. But as hard as we looked, we couldn't find any more. Suddenly, Aubrey got my attention and pointed to our right, just below us. Quickly looking that way, I was surprised to see a golden eagle perched just below us on the rocks. I have no idea how it hadn't seen us sitting above it in the very rock outcropping it had perched in. We were enjoying watching it and I quickly gave the camera I had to Aubrey so I could see if I could get close ups with my other camera. That's when it flew off, but not before Aubrey even got some pictures with just her phone it was so close. 
Well, that was fun to see. So with it gone, it was back to looking everything over once more to see if any other deer had materialized. All right, so Aubrey decided we're gonna go and get a different angle and check some of the other country out, see if there's any other bucks in there aside from what we've seen. Um, it'll keep us in the same area though, so we can still make a play on that one if we, if we choose and if we can find it again. Moving over to the other side of the drainage and hiking up to another good spot to glass from, we once again looked everything over well and from this angle only saw a couple more deer, including the same big two point we'd seen earlier. By the time we had verified that nothing else was in the area, I gave Aubrey the opportunity to go after that bigger buck we'd seen, but she chose to pass, at least for now. So the next day we were back at it, but checking out some other spots that have been good for us in the past. The first spot was a huge bust, but I did spot a few deer several miles away and could tell one was a buck. So driving a bit closer, we found the deer again and noticed that the buck was just another small one. However, while watching them, I spotted some other deer way up high and like the others, there was a buck running in the group. I could tell right off the bat that it was a decent buck. Looking it over as close as I could, I found that once again, it wasn't as big as I thought. It was a four point, but each of the forks were actually quite small. Now as we hadn't been seeing much and it was actually in a pretty decent spot to sneak in on, albeit very high, I asked Aubrey what she wanted to do. And she once again chose to pass and look for a bigger buck. So we're back out for another day as you saw we we spotted that four point this morning. We saw another little two point, about 14 other does. Um, just nothing that really got Aubrey excited. And so we've actually come back to the same vantage point that we hiked up to yesterday where we saw those three bucks and lots of other does. And you know, yesterday there was a decent buck, but it just wasn't quite big enough. Um, today maybe it's big enough, you know. So it only took one day to lower standards down a little bit. And part of it is looking at the schedule. We've got a lot going on and some family things. And so Aubrey really is very limited with time between that and school. And so we're going to go up. We're going to see what we can find. We're hoping something else has moved in overnight. Um, and we're hoping we can find anything really. And either way, we're going to go up there. We'll spot again, see what we can find, go from there. Well, today this point was just a big bust. We didn't see a single deer. And without having any deer visible that would at least give us a direction to go, all we could do was hike back out and try somewhere else. Well, it is a cold, windy morning up here. It's all we can do to try to stay out of the wind. But so far we have not found anything but a little two point. And it was uh, pretty quick before you get the camera out and a long ways off. And that's it. Um, there is another hunter. There's been a bit of it looks like sign that people have been in here a bit so that might be the case because this has been a good place but again this is the last day of the hunt for us and Aubrey seems to have a knack for holding out till the end and then being lucky you know there was that first time she was 12 when she had a her first elk tag and then just a couple years later she drew a late elk hunt run up there and lay down hurry when we were about 30 yards from where we figured we'd see them, I suddenly saw the three bulls running away from us on the opposite hillside about 300 yards off. Obviously, they'd hurt us well before we got there. The, second, the one right in the middle. You see the one in the middle? It's... Go again, hurry. Taking her first shot, she missed. With that, she settled down a little bit until she felt more steady for the next one. Oh, you got him. You got him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you did it, Aubrey. <laughs> oh, 400 yards. What do you got to say? I love it. <laughs> we think he's a decent bull, but... I'm okay with whatever, I'm just glad I got one. Holy smokes, he was a seven, he's a seven point. Thank you. Finally, just last year, she drew a muzzleloader deer tag, the same tag we're working on right now, and again, waited for the last day. 
Just before getting to our predetermined shooting spot, Aubrey once again put a cap on and we made the final sneak. It took a little maneuvering among the rocks and mahogany we were hiding in to have an angle to the buck as they had moved a bit, but finally things were coming in place. The smaller buck fed right in the way just as she was planning to shoot, so she had to wait for it to move. Yeah, the back one. As soon as it walks past, okay, you're good now. You got him, you got him. It was hit all right, but not down for good. We had to get in and make one more shot to finish it off, and the hunt was over. It's down now, so we need to go. <laughs> Last day of the hunt, a couple hours left in the day, and we got a deer down. So now we'll head on over and, and uh, go ahead and pack it out. The good thing is it's by the road, so this will be the easiest deer I've ever gotten. Or at least <laughs> been with somebody who's gotten, so that's a good thing. <laughs> It wasn't until this animal was down that we realized how much Aubrey likes to get her animals at the end of the hunt. Two other elk she shot over the years and now her deer have all been taken on the last day. All right, so here is Aubrey's very hard earned. So now that we're at 2018, who knows what's gonna happen. This place has been a bust. So we'll probably go ahead and take off and just cut our losses and head somewhere else and see if we can find something. So a week later after Thanksgiving, Aubrey and I were back out. But this time there was a couple inches of fresh snow that we had hoped would help us see the deer more clearly. As it had been a full week since we were last out, we went back to that spot that had several bucks on it the first day and seemed to be a good area as we hoped that there would be even more bucks that had moved in over that week. Once again getting out the spotting scopes, we tried our best to find a big buck to put a stock on. Well, this is our last day that I can come out and hunt and so we came back to the same spot we saw those deer last week and same spot I got my deer last year and so we were hoping it would turn out a little bit better but we've only seen a few does and a little two points so we're going to go try a different spot and see what happens. As this was our last day in the field we hurried over to a new area and with the help of the snowy conditions still found some deer rather quickly. There were five does but try as we did we couldn't place any antlers on them. Swinging around to another spot, Aubrey spotted more deer. This group had nine, and so surely there had to be a buck with that many does. But no, we looked and watched and even kept a sharp eye out behind them, thinking maybe the buck was just lagging behind. But no buck ever appeared. Not only could we not find any bucks, but to make matters worse, the wind really started picking up. It was all you could do to glass without your eyes watering up so bad you couldn't see anymore. But we tried and used everything we could to hide from the wind when possible. Well, we're hiding out from the wind as best we can and still glassing and, and just trying to cover a lot of country. It's now noon and we've seen about 20 deer and uh, so far the only thing with the antlers is that first little two point at first light. So it's not looking good. With time running out, we hurried over to yet another spot and hiked up to a point to view from and spotted seven deer that were all acting odd and looking behind them. Hoping there was a buck in the back causing the commotion, instead we watched as a hunter walked out of the trees and up to a buck he had just shot before we had crested the ridge. It wasn't a big one, but we were still obviously too late for this area. We were now left with just an hour in the last day of the hunt. At this point there really wasn't any time to head to a new area, so we just started working back to the truck. On our way out, Aubrey swung over to look into a small draw we hadn't looked into yet, and all of a sudden she stopped me and motioned that there were deer up ahead. I only moved forward when she let me know with hand signals that it was safe to move, and eventually came up along her to see what she was looking at. She pointed at a few does that were up ahead. Dang, I had really hoped we'd stumbled onto a buck. All the way down, get outside then. It's like the wind. What? It's like the wind. 
Suddenly, another deer appeared right in front of us, and a flash of antler caught our attention. Ducking down and grabbing the gun, I asked Aubrey what she had seen. That's when she let me know it was only a two-point. However, as you know, we were now out of time and wouldn't have the chance at another buck. And this buck was in range. So once again, I put it in her hands. Even though this is the last day of my hunt and probably won't see any more today, I'm going to pass on him. Well, it's come. It's the evening now. The sun has started to set. We've just got that last half hour light or so, and we've kind of knocked this area out. There's nothing more than that two point and uh, some does and a few other hunters. So, Aubrey, the last day, <laughs> always get your animal on the last day didn't work this year. No. <laughs> and I even passed. <laughs> so yeah, she passed on those ones the first day, but you know, that was the first morning. We saw two four points, a big two point, you know, a, a couple at least that by, right now we would for sure take. Um, we didn't know those would be the only good bucks we saw. So it was, it was a tough year. We didn't have as many days to hunt this year. We only had three days to hunt. And uh, just between school and family things and stuff, we didn't have the time. We still got to come out, spend some time together, freeze a little bit, see some animals, and uh, just have a good time. That's going to wrap it up this time. You know, sometimes it's tag soup, and this time it's Aubrey's tag soup. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Jared Scott Outdoors YouTube channel.